this is great. This is this is so beautiful, man. This is important work that we're doing up here. So it, it matters. I don't I don't know why you think you came out. You know. Oh, it's date night. Where can we not talk for ninety minutes or whatever? Like I don't know what you're thinking. But let me tell you what's happening on this rooftop right now. Audience, comedian, we're coming together and we're birthing laughter into the world where previously it did not exist, thereby making the world a better place. So, yeah, we're doing our part, absolutely. We're doing our part. Yeah. We're doing what we can, you know what I mean? Like, I can't do anything about the climate or the Ukraine or the Supreme Court, but I can talk about my dick for 10 minutes, you know what I mean? I can do that. <laughs> And, you know, there's a sacrifice involved in it. Like, before I left to come, I drove up here from New York, which is, you might not be geography buffs, but it, it's far. And uh, <clears throat> I came up here, I was on my way out the door, right? Which is, I'm no hero, that's just, that's how I leave my apartment, you know. Uh, <clears throat> maybe you're a window dude, I don't know your story, you know. I'm a doorman. And uh, I'm not a doorman, I didn't mean that. I don't, I don't have a job. But I, uh, <laughs> I leave through doors, all right? Real sticklers, Boston. Anyway, I'm on my way out the door, and my son stops me, right? And he says to me, he goes, Whoa, Daddy, do you have a show tonight? He's, we didn't say that exactly. He said, Mike, do you have a show tonight? <laughs> and I, I said, yes, I do. You know, and he was like, well, would you skip it? Because I want you to read me a story. Tuck me in, put me to bed, have a relationship with me. <laughs> I know. I was like, buddy, I'd love to, but there are 84 complete fucking strangers uh, on the roof of a troubled company by the river. <laughs> and, uh, they need to hear about daddy's balls. So like, I, I don't know what to tell you, you know? Maybe learn to read, put yourself to bed. Stop asking for a fucking handout all the time. You're four years old, it's ridiculous. It turns out he's six, but the point is, the point is that this matters, right? And we're gonna do, I'm gonna do my best for you guys, absolutely. I would do better than my best, but I, I can't. Uh, so I'll do my best. I'm not at my best, but I'm gonna do my best. I am, I should, full disclosure, I am still recovering right now. You can probably tell. I'm still recovering from a, from a very aggressive nap. And um, I don't know if you guys know these naps, you know the ones, those nap, the ones that come to fucking play, right? You know, like, you know those naps, you're like, I'm gonna close my eyes for five minutes. Right? And the nap's just like, shh, nowhere to be, nothing to do. <laughs> Nobody needs anything. Nobody wants anything. Serenity. <laughs> I thought I was gonna take this nap. This fucking nap took me. And uh, you fight your way out, but you're never quite the same. You're never the same man who went down to the nap after you come out. It always keeps a little peace, the nap. <laughs> then you try and go down at the end of the night, and it's like, nah, you had your chance, bro. How about you lay awake, wonder why you weren't kinder to your parents? Why don't you do that instead? <laughs> so. This particular nap was in my car, thank you. Uh, I'm not trying to big time, you just credits I have. <laughs> that's down in New York, that's a big credit, man. That's one of my favorite things about living in New York is it's filled with rich, powerful, fucking world beaters. But it's the only place I've ever lived where I could straight up be like, I spent the night in my car under a bridge. <laughs> and they'd be like, oh my God, you have a car? <laughs> what are you doing this weekend? <laughs> I do sleep in my car a lot because I have kids. And uh, <laughs> you, guys, you guys know these, these, these fuckers. They, they wake up 6.30, daddy's hung over. Where is he supposed to go? A mobile nap chamber, correct, that's right. I'm sensing a little judgment on the rooftop. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what your childhoods were like. It's actually not about you. Um, I love my kids, I do. I can never be one of those shit dads. You know, those shit that went out for a gallon of milk and never came back. You know, but... I am often that dad who goes out for the gallon of milk and comes back five hours later rested and refreshed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and when I come back, sure, usually it is without the milk, but daddy's home, you know? And I feel like that's the point. These kids are so spoiled, they want milk and a dad. Life's about choices, all right? How about you eat your cereal dry? Let's play catch. You know, that's how... <clears throat> yeah, I got the kids, got the kids tough over that pandemic. We all made changes over the pandemic. I think everyone made big changes. Here's one change I made over the pandemic is I became middle-aged. Uh, I didn't mean to, it just happened. I'm not sure like when it starts. I think middle age starts the moment you Google when does middle age start. I think that's, you type it in and Google's like, it just did, that's what happened. Because it can't be a number, you know, it's not a number. 
it's different for every, some people are born middle aged. You know? <laughs> like I got this son who's, he's nine years old or he's six, or he's an age. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> he goes somewhere during the day, he comes back. The point is, <laughs> he came back off the school bus. He comes up to me and he goes, um, Austin Richards would not wear his seatbelt on the school bus. That's a middle aged dude, right? <laughs> School bus narc for sure is halfway done. I mean, that's... And I should have known, because when he was first born, he had this condition called cradle cap, which is where you're born with a full head of hair and it all falls out. And I think that was his way of telling me, like, look, dude, I don't have my words, but just so you know, I'm 50, all right? I want you to know that. Yeah, we made, we made some choices that were weird. There's certain things that we can never do again from the pandemic. Like, here, we can never, here's what we can never close the schools again. <laughs> we can't close the fucking schools all right you know what they can close the schools i'm dropping my kids off how about that I'm, they can board up the windows i'm leaving three kids there at eight i'm picking up three at three i would prefer they're the same kids that's to, you know optional i uh my wife's been on me about inventory so I, I would like the same number of children back and that's uh that's hard for me to say because i fucking i hate school I really do. I hate school. The only thing I hate more than school is my kids not going to school. That's <laughs> the only thing. That, I, I didn't like school because I wasn't good at it. You know, they, they said I had attention deficit disorder, which maybe that's true, but it, it's a little suspect when it's coming from the school. You know what I mean? Because who would accuse you of a deficit of attention? Probably someone who's boring as shit, right? <laughs> Just gotta throw it out there. We have to at least consider the possibility. My Sega Genesis never had a problem with my attention span. <laughs> never once did a nipple of any gender ever have to be like, Mike, over here. Like, I was always focused, you know what I mean? So perhaps the problem is not with me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know. The only nice thing about being diagnosed attention deficit is they give you those drugs. You guys know those drugs, right? <laughs> That Adderall, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Those are amphetamines. Those are serious drugs, man. That's the shit that Pete Rose was taking to get 4,000 hits. <laughs> Not a big baseball crowd. Okay. Um, it's the same shit that Hitler was taking when he went, I have an idea. Like, these are very powerful drugs that help you achieve at a high level wherever you point them. <laughs> And I think it's badass that as a society, we're just like, yeah, we should probably give those to like any child who doesn't have an intuitive understanding of fractions. I think that's what we should do. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> but yeah, because I like wasn't good at school, whenever I deal with it, like the adults at my kids' school, like the administrators and the teachers and stuff, I always feel like I'm right back in school. Like no time has passed, you know what I mean? So I'll be like in parent-teacher conference and I'm alone with the teacher and I'm just like, oh shit, what did I do? <laughs> She's across from me, she's asking me, you know, she's talking to me like I'm a grown-up, you know. <laughs> she, she doesn't know. Uh, no one told her, I just got bigger, right? So, she's across from me, she's like, you know, what do you think are some of your son's strengths and weaknesses, or whatever. But I'm across from her, I'm back in school. I'm just like, oh shit, Miss Alfano knows I'm high. All right, uh, you got this, you got this, you're a big boy now. You don't look her in the eye, though, that's how she reads your thoughts. Uh, fuck. <laughs> Why is this furniture so small? Uh, so I'm taking my son to kindergarten, first day, right? And we're late, you know. Uh, what are we, fucking nerds? We get there when we get there. Jesus Christ, I got the invite. I saw the start time. We're fucking coming, Christ. And I take him to the front desk, and I'm like, this is my son, I'm gonna take him to class. And the lady at the front desk goes, no, you're not gonna take him to class. You're gonna take him upstairs to administration and change his attendance, that's what you're gonna do. And that was a surprise. Because if you had asked me what I thought I would be doing at 40, I wouldn't have known. But first guess was not going to be getting sent to the principal's office. <laughs> what can I say? Still got it. <laughs> and I get up there, the principal's mad. She comes right up to me, Mr. Leibovitz, you must be on time. I'm like, oh shit, we got him on the wrong foot, all right. <laughs> Yikes, first of all, please call me Mike, okay? Because <laughs> Mr. Leibovitz is my dick. And uh, it, it just seems a little disrespectful, frankly, for you to be addressing him in, in this setting. But that's all right. My eyes are up here. Uh, <clears throat> you ever do happen to meet him, you call him sir, don't look him in the eye. But second of all, and it's more to your point, it's like, yeah, I know we're not supposed to be late. I know we're supposed to be on time or whatever you call it. But what you need to understand about us is that we were sleeping. Uh, so, you know, 
don't know what you want us to do. Fucking wake up. Like, <laughs> call me old fashioned. I like to finish one thing. I'm the horse. Uh, you know. And then she said, Well, what's more important, your child's education or a little more sleep? And that was the minute when I realized like, what was going on. I was like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize you'd lost your fucking mind. Uh, okay, I get it now. I, I apologize. You think school's more important than sleep? <laughs> baby, no. <laughs> school, baby, school. Come on. You're a pretty girl, but let's not enter a pageant we can't win. You know what I mean? You got a lot of great qualities. You got the alphabet. You got the multiplication tables. Don't put that up against the loving embrace of timeless oblivion if you lost your fucking mind. <laughs> on school you teach us to follow our dreams but th that's where they fucking happen you know so. <laughs> and then she goes look i understand you guys were tardy during pre-k a lot but this is kindergarten it counts now and i was like sure but does it you know what i mean like uh, what do you think's gonna happen like you think uh like some someone's gonna ask for his kindergarten transcript what, what the fuck are you talking about like, <laughs> Like he's gonna be in a job interview and they're gonna be like, oh dear. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I see you have all the qualifications. Yeah, but we really, really need to know that you can share. So, uh, uh, I'm sorry. This company's not just about returning value for stockholders. It's also about cutting with scissors and putting caps back on markers. So, <laughs> we'll continue this interview after my nap. Good day. You know, it's just like, I just feel like I've been hearing that my whole life. I'm fucking sick of it. My whole life, people have been like, dude, watch out what you're about to do. Look out. Because that counts. And I'm not sure it does. You know what I mean? Like, okay, you, all right, I'll explain. You guys remember when you got into high school? Did you guys get into high school? Okay. So you remember, you get into high school, they're like, welcome to high school. I hope you had fun in middle school. And or junior high, depending on region. But uh, now you got to study hard, because now your grades, watch out. Now they count. And you're just like, what was all that shit back there? <laughs> it didn't count. It felt so real the whole time. Okay, all right, but this counts, right? This, okay, all right, so I'm gonna study. Yes, I'm gonna learn flashcards, facts, get in my head. You know? And you do that, and you get good grades, and you get into college, right? And then they're just like, welcome to college. <laughs> I hope you had fun in high school. <laughs> Navigating social pressures, coming to terms with your sexuality. <laughs> now you gotta pick a major, decide what to do with your life, time to make it count. And you're like, you got me again, man. <laughs> well played, life. <laughs> So you do that, you pick a major, right? You study hard, you graduate college, and then what do they tell you when you get out of college? They tell you, welcome to the... Yeah. I'm starting to think maybe it never fucking counts, right? <laughs> they keep making like it's the big game. It's starting to feel like a big, long scrimmage the whole fucking time, isn't it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're gonna be on our deathbeds going like, ooh, I think it starts to count soon. Ooh, yeah. Which is sad, because at that point, yeah, the only thing we know for sure is coming is, well, it's sleep. Uh, <laughs> people call me lazy, I've just been studying for the final exam the whole time. That's, all I mean. That's it, thank you so much. Yes.